Good morning, everybody. It's your friend, Ben. Let's talk about death. And I'm not talking about character death this morning. I know I'm talking a lot about my writing lately. But uh, right now, I'm talking about real death. And I'm not talking about human death. I'm talking about the death of a pet. And no, no, nobody's died. Not uh, Enoch Silas. Uh, which, if you know anything about some of my stories, are uh, Rusty. Carlos, uh, not Elijah and Anna, and not Nandy, but I'm actually talking about preparing for death. Um, Nandy is our wine brand. If you go on my YouTube videos, I'll have a link below. We have a wine brander, and a wine brander is a German hunting dog or a gun dog. Um, they're beautiful dogs, amazing dogs, hyper dogs. <laughs> Very, very intelligent, very passionate, caring dogs. Have you ever seen the gray silver dogs? Sometimes they're called the gray ghost. Um, these dogs um, are the ones that are used in these weird ads or, or, or things where they have like a gray head and they put them in like, have these human bodies where they're sitting there and they're just kind of looking at you kind of weird. Those are those dogs. Um, and they have like these silver blue eyes. That's them. Um, they also are known, if you, if you do any, you know, you got time, look it up on Google. They're known to have separation anxiety. I didn't know this before I got her. Um, so, little tidbit for you. Separation anxiety, known to be very, very intelligent, problem solvers, very destructive. Would have been nice to know, and I could have prepared the house a little more. Um, again, this is all background, um... So, you know, because we've had her for 13 years now. So, we've been through a lot with her. Um, we had her since she was a pup. Um, so, you know, we've been through thick and through thin. Um, raised her. Cake crate trained her. She's the only dog. I've had quite a few dogs, but she's the only dog that I have fully house broken. Crate trained. Done everything right. Not saying I didn't make a few mistakes here and there, but uh, you know, every other dog, I I just made some mistakes. I didn't know. I know what to do, but I, I learned my lessons. I, I properly trained her. She's housebroken. She knows how to walk on a lead. Um, she actually has the harness. Um, she has all her shots. She's up to date. I know how to properly trim her nails. Um, she now in her in her old age um, is pretty well behaved. She still has kind of issues now. Since she's older, she's actually pretty hard of hearing. I didn't know. I mean, I guess I don't know why I didn't think about it, but dogs lose their hearing. Nandy, I mean, you got to yell for her to hear you, which is wild because when she was younger, her hearing was very acute. She could, she would be asleep in the back of the house, and she could hear, um, you know, like a scuttle of of a, of a squirrel across the front of the house, and it would drive us nuts. Somebody would knock on the door, and her barking and yelping would wake us all up. It was like having a free doorbell. It was wild. It was just wild. You know, we were trying to hide from Jehovah Witnesses and mailmen and there was no doing that. Um, uh, so, and she, like I said, she's strong and fast and powerful. Um, with the separation anxiety, we didn't know at first. Um, so when we were crate training her, I inadvertently, accidentally left things in and or nearby the crate which you're supposed to be learning to be housebroken and she destroyed them left a soccer ball in there thinking she would play with it she broke it devoured it ate part of it came out um my son had left his backpack on top of it she pulled it down tore it up ate all this um you know all these other things uh tore open the bible she got accidentally closed herself into the bathroom, destroyed part of the door. Um, I had op uh, there was a vent for our laundry room, mudroom door that I had taken the vent off of, so she could go through there to get to the back, the mudroom door. The cats could go through there to get to the litter box. She started chewing around the thing. She chewed into a sofa, the cushions. You know. There's a three-hour video I taped when we had went out one day just to see what was going on with her. If you have time, 
go in there and like fast forward, you can see her howling and crying for like half an hour at a time in our cat Elijah, our alpha cat and our male cat. He, he has a unique relationship with her. He's trying to comfort her. It's wild, you know. Um, he's rubbing against her. He's meowing at her. He's like, it's like he's like, baby, it's okay, baby. Calm down, I'll be back. I know you're confused. I know you don't understand. You have no concept of time as a dog. But they will be back. Let's try and calm her. Dogs don't get time. They really don't. She doesn't. I think that's the flaw in her. She doesn't. She doesn't get time. So because anytime she she's really attached to me. So I'll be sitting down. And she'll, she'll, boom, she sits right next to me. She has to be next to me if I'm around. If I'm next to whoever she considers the next in line for leadership in the house, my wife, and then my daughter, like that, she'll, she'll go down the line and have to be sitting next to them. Um, and then, you know, so she'll move next to them. And if I get up, she'll, she'll gravitate to where I am. And if I go upstairs, she'll go to the bottom of the stairs because she never learned stairs. Our old place was a ranch, one flat level. So she never learned stairs, bless her heart. So she will be at the foot of the stairs till I come down. Um, and then you know, when I come down, she follows me around that, that bottom level. So that's Nandy. Uh, and like I said, she's getting older. But um, to just took her to the vet for her checkup to get you know, her shots up to date and everything. He says her heart's still strong. Um, like I said, she does have the problem with the hearing and she started to get a little incontinence. So she's taking this stuff called Proin. It helps uh, you know, hold it a little better. But she has to go out like an, uh, an extraordinary amount of times a day now. It's like almost two to three times the amount of times that she, she used to have to go out. She doesn't mind unless it's cold or it's raining. Because um, she loves to be outside. But, uh, you know, back in the day, she only had to go out like three or four times a day. Now it's like eight, nine times a day minimum. So she doesn't pee pee in the house. Um, but uh, it was even causing problems with poop. But the pro one makes it much better um, and she's greedy she loves people food she'll eat her dog food but she just loves people food she, she just stand there by the table and stand there by the table but her stomach has become so so sensitive she can't have it not a drop as soon as we give her anything I, like I mean even the smidge corner piece of him, the next day is just diarrhea bill. I mean, it's like explosive town. It's, it's like a horror movie, horrendous. So that's done, and I feel sorry for her because she used to be like a cast iron skillet. It didn't matter. You could feed her rocks, and, and she would eat rocks. It was wild. She would eat cat poop. She would eat rocks. The dog was a machine. It was like she was a Terminator. Nothing would stop her. But, you know, anyway. Sorry, that was eight minutes of getting to know Nanny. So, Weimaraner's average lifespan, 10 to 12 years. Nandy is a machine. I don't know if all these things, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, or she just refuses to die. But here she is, doctor, she has a strong heart. She's breathing well, but this morning I'm letting her out. On my way to therapy, she's a little slow. Taking her time, sniffing around, doing her business. She's looking at me like, hey dad, I'm coming. She comes in the house. She eats her breakfast. I'm like, okay, baby. Take your time. You know, I love her. But I know my kids. They grew up with her. They're going to be devastated. And how do I prepare them for that? They've really only lost one other pet. And now, if I start crying and I'm driving, you know, pray for me that I don't crash. Because... I'm going to be upset when Nanny does that. But they're going to crash and burn. The only other pet they lost... When we, okay, we have four cats now. Before that, we had three cats. Because we got two cats. We got... Um, and it, to add to this family. We, we, had, we added to the family um, two kittens, which were Enoch and Silas. Yes, prophets. Um, apostles. Um, the ones that we already had were Elijah and Anna and Isaiah. Don't know what happened, but within the space of less than 24 hours, Isaiah got sick and died. 
It was the it was the saddest, most tragic thing I have ever seen, and and there was nothing we could do. Nothing. And my family and I. years ago so and we got the other two kittens you know two years ago three years ago so but when those kids saw that they were devastated and you know that they've had a long time to forget that to forget that pain I don't know how they're gonna handle it again I don't know how I'm going to handle their pain. So. Having them having known Andy for so long. Her having been a part of their life. Grown up with her. Fed her. Cleaned up after her. You know, people say, oh, the pet is my child. It's not their child. It's more like their sister. You know, a weird, furry, messy, destructive sister. So, that's just my thoughts today. How do you prepare your children for something like that? You know it's coming. It's on the horizon. It's like a movie where you know a character you care about is going to die. There's no avoiding it. You, you can get up and walk out. You can take him to the vet early. You know, they know it's coming. My kids aren't stupid. You know, and I, I've tried to prepare them. They don't want to talk about it. You know, of course, you don't want Nandy to be in pain, and you don't know how much pain a dog can't really truly express pain. She can whine, she can whine, she can cry. The doctor said, of course, I've asked him about this. And they'll say, well, she'll lose her appetite. She'll get up sl slower. There'll be signs. Um, if you're close to your pet, they say you'll know. And, uh, I don't know. If you have thoughts, feelings, if you lost a pet, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, hopefully I didn't depress you too much. And you, I don't lose friends because I was crying like a little girl. A little baby, I don't mean to be offensive. I know both boys cry too, obviously. Anyway, guys, you have a great day. Have a great week, weekend, whenever you're watching this. This has been your friend, Ben. Have a great day. Bye.